hi, my name's Glenn Hustleman. I'm just making this video for the Free Accounting Software users to show you guys how to pay Working Holiday Maker using Free Accounting Software. So um, I've set up this business and I've got some employees set up. It's all just set up currently as a non-Working Holiday Maker um, scenario. Um, I'm going to, um, so I'm going to show you the changes that you need to make to press this Working Holiday Maker. First of all, on the My Business Details page, there's this setting called Working Holiday Maker Registered Employer. Um, it's got an option of blank or yes, so blank is the equivalent of no. Um, so there is a requirement to, um, if you are paying Working Holiday Makers, say whether you as an employer are registered for Working Holiday Maker or not. Um, and the employee will be taxed differently depending on whether you are registered to employ working holiday makers or not. So um, I'm going to set that to yes in this scenario. Um, although you should, and you should only set that to yes if you are in fact registered for working holiday makers. Anyway, um, that's the only setting on the business setup side of things. So now I'll show you the employee setup. So I've got this employee called another employee here. Um, in fact, I'm just going to change the name for the demo to WHM employee. Um, although obviously that would be the um, employee's name um, that you'd be putting in there. Um, now on payroll details, um, there is a um, and through to the TFN declaration. So on the TFN declaration, there are a, a few things that are slightly different. So um, going down to the details of payment arrangement, um, we've got um, this residency status question. Now that has re options resident, non-resident, and working holiday maker. So I'm gonna select working holiday maker there. Uh, payment basis and claim tax free threshold, yes or no, are the same questions as otherwise, I guess it's not different for working holiday makers. Okay, now um, there is one more thing to set on the employee setup, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, the next thing I want to do is set up a tax code. Um, so uh, we've got, um, in fact, two tax codes to set up. So we've got the normal tax code here, gross taxable wages, which is what we're going to what we normally use on the person's gross salary. Um, and that is just to have a quick look at that. Um, that's got this income type of salaries and wages. Um, the other things here are fine, except we need another one with a income type of working holiday maker. Um, so let's set that up. On the basis this is just going to go in the same spot, salaries and wages. I can find it. There it is. Income type. So we've got all these different income types. And um, the one we want is Working Holiday Maker. Um, this video might be useful to someone who's setting up a different income type uh, as well, just as a, serving as an example of how to do this. But anyway, um, the second setting here um, is only for STP1. It's only there to, so that um, we, you know this software can actually still lodge STP1. Um, um for this transitional period. Anyway, um, gross classification, we just put that to gross and tax is not applicable. Now, there is another setting here called country. Okay, for working holiday maker, the country should be the employee's um, home country. Now, if you set it here, it's gonna be the same for, well, every 
um, employee. So I imagine you might have, if you're employing working holiday makers, you might have um, one or more working holiday maker from uh, one country and then some from another country. So we really cannot set it here. We're going to set it on the employee's um, setup. So I'll save that. Okay. Um, now we also want a pay as you go withholding um, tax code. So um, you can have a look at this pay as you go withheld tax code. It's going to be the same except instead of saying salaries and wages, it's going to say working holiday maker. So anyway, let's set up a new one. On the BAS, this goes to pay as you go withholding payable. Income type is working holiday maker. Gross is not applicable. And tax is pay as you go withheld. Uh, you will see that there's things like there are, you know, um, other pay as you go options here. Like um, there is in fact a pay as you go working holiday. I mean, if you choose that, it's, it's gonna still work. Um, However, um, th those are old settings that were um, there for single touch power one. Um, with this setting is sort of now split into two settings. So the old setting was um, saying that it was pay as you go withheld, but it was also saying what kind of income type it was now. Um, we're just saying pay as you go withheld and that income type um, information is up here again the country is is applicable um, except I'm not going to set it on the tax code setup we're going to set it on the employee setup given that several that employees might um, have several different home countries we need to set it up over there okay I'm going to save that um, Now going back to the accounts, well sorry, going back to the menu and then I'm going to click on accounts. So we need a new account because um, on the pay slip we don't directly pick up the tax codes or directly enter the tax codes, we enter the account. So I'm going to pick and create a new account um, which is going to be s similar to normal time if you wanted to copy one, but I'm going to call this working holiday maker uh, normal time. Um, it's an expense, apply super true. And when we get to the t tax code, we want to link it to that working holiday maker gross tax code that we set up. Payment deduction type is earnings and it's important to um, get that right. And we're going to pay um, in terms of rate and mul normal rate multiplier, you can choose whether it's a fixed rate or it's a multiplier of their normal rate of pay. And I want to pay, in this case, one times their normal rate of pay. So I'll save that. Okay, we almost finished the setup, although I did mention we'd have to set the country on the employee record. And I'll just show you how to do that. So we're going back to the working holiday maker employee. and clicking on payroll details. So over here we have a setting called override country bracket STP2. And over here we can choose a country that they might that might be their home uh, country. I hope, I'm not sure if home country is the right term for it, but it's um, but yeah, I'm going to call it home country. Um, so this person is a working holiday maker who's from New Zealand working in Australia. So now that completes the setup and um, oh, in fact uh, I've just noticed something here which is um, a little bit strange although it is possibly correct is that I've got this end date and this cessation type code um, 
so this is just test data I'm mucking around with and probably you wouldn't have that right probably this person hasn't um, finished working although they could have and in that case you would enter those fields okay um, now now we've completed the setup for the um, employee so let's just go and put it in a payslip to show you guys how that um, looks on the payslip so I'll just create a, a batch for the first week in July and then create a new payslip. So you want to pick up that working holiday maker employee. Um, you see that there's a message there. Um, that is if um, the tax treatment code is this kind of thing, there must be a working holiday maker um, thing. So, um, so the tax treatment code is down here and it says it's a working holiday maker and it's uh, a, and the employer is registered for working holiday maker at the moment we've got no year to date announced and this um, is because it's the first pay in the financial year so um, so this error is coming up to say you know if it's a working holiday maker you've got to have a working holiday maker um, income stream type um, but we'll fix that in a moment because when I enter this uh, and put um, some hours on it, then we've got um, the, the we'll have it down there. So um, over here we've got some amount next to the working holiday maker normal time. It's calculating tax and it's picking up our um, working holiday maker as you go withholding tax code um, if we scroll down in the pay event info section we've got year to date amounts and there is a um, working holiday maker section where it says the country is New Zealand it's got the tax and the gross um, and you'll notice that there is some um, difference here to the uh, normal salary and wages um, income type in that um, first of all the country is displayed and that is relevant to this income type and there are a couple of things like director's fees or foreign employment income that are not relevant to working holiday maker and they are not displayed okay um, so uh, having entered that payslip you know, it's just a matter of saving it. Um, you can go to the and you, and you know, you can you can watch the other videos on how to do the lodge, which is exactly the same process as the as what's dis, what's demonstrated in the um, other single touch payroll videos. Um, so I think that's pretty much um, um, the basics of working holiday maker. Uh,